Hey, welcome back to my demonstration and playthrough of the Faber Piano Adventure series, the second edition of the lesson book number one. And we left off in unit four, where we discuss intervals. Now, um, on page 26, we talked about intervals and how an interval is the distance from one note to the next. Here we talked about seconds. So a second is just from your C note to your D note. Okay, one, two, that's gonna be a second. Okay, it's called a melodic second because it's one after the other, as opposed to the harmonic second, which is at the same time, but we'll get into that a little bit later. We also, on page 27, have a interval of a third. Okay, so we're gonna get into that as well. But first things first, let me just do a demonstration of the traffic jam seconds on page 26. Okay, here we go. Looks like we have our uh, right hand on the high G. So it's not the G above middle C, it's the treble G up here, okay? And left hand, we have our five finger on this bass C, okay? So the right hand is going down when the left hand is going up, and then when the right hand is going up, the left hand is going down. So we're in contrary motion. Here we go. One, two, ready, go. In that very last measure, we have legato going into staccato. So we have the, the two fingers and off on the on that last uh, note there. And on measure five, we have what sounds like honking horns. Okay. Fun little part there. Okay. Let's go ahead and move on to page 27 where we discuss the interval of the thirds. So C to E or D to F. E to G would all be considered thirds here. Okay, now a lot of my students get this song mixed up because it sounds just like Jingle Bells, but it's not Jingle Bells. That's the title. This is not Jingle Bells. So it looks like it's a hybrid between Yankee Doodle and Jingle Bells, but let me just do a demonstration and uh, go from there, okay? So right hand on middle C, left hand on the G. Okay, one, two, ready. song we have two uh, hand position moves. Uh, we move from here, our thumb on G, to the thumb on B. So in measure seven, it looks like we're going to have to have our thumb on that B note. And then in measure nine, we have to move back to our original position. Okay? So we got to watch for those two hand position uh, move, uh, movements there. Okay, on 28, we're going to use the pedal. We have a lot of slurs. You see these long lines? Those are slurs. We learned that in one of our earlier units. And we're gonna just ride that pedal from measure one all the way to measure 16. Okay, we're in three, four time. We have melodic thirds in the left, melodic thirds in the right. Okay. Um, so yeah, let's see if we can give it a go, okay? One, two, ready, go. Over. Okay, 
So we have a lot to discuss with this one. Uh, the first thing is when you bring your hands over with your left hand, you're not going to just push your right hand out of the way. Okay, we're going to bring it over with our wrist. Okay, we're not going to do it like this. We're going to lift with our wrist and kind of just gracefully put our second finger on that A. And then while we're playing our right hand pinky is when we're moving back into position. Okay, we don't want to just wait for, uh, for one, two, three, one, two, three, and then move because then we'd have to get there in a hurry. So we want to make sure that one, two, three, we're moving so we don't have to rush to get there. Okay, so when you're not playing, you're moving to the next position. Okay, now in measure 17, again, we're trying to tell a story here. We're trying to tell the audience that something is ascending higher. And when it ascends higher, it's slowly fading out of view. So to do that, what the composer does is every time we go higher, we're getting softer and we're slowing down. Okay? So feel free to take that part as slow as you need to and remember to use your wrists when you move. Okay, not just kind of robotically uh, just, just you know, shift the position. You want to gracefully move. You want to gracefully move on the piano. On the piano. Okay. Let's go to page thirty, where we discuss the interval of a fourth. So from C to F is going to be a fourth. Okay. Your right hand is going to be on middle C. Left hand, two finger on the F. Okay. So watch those staccatos. Here we go. about the fermata. Now this can be interpreted in a few different ways. So what I like to do is I like to uh, observe the fermata to just hold it longer than its original value. Now that's what it says, but you have the discretion to kind of hold it as long as you want within reason. So what I did here was I just doubled the counts. So when I play it on measure from, from nine to 10, I did one, two, three, four, and then I'm right back into it. Now you could do one, two, three. It's kind of like when you sing happy birthday, you do. Okay, and right there, there's no set amount of time when we do that happy birthday. Okay, we just hold it until we're ready. And, and then we finish it up. Okay, so it's very similar to that. You have the artistic license to hold that note longer than what you would uh, normally be responsible for, okay? All right, that was the mixed up song moving along to the flute of the Andes. Okay, we're still learning about fourths, but we have an octave sign. So on the top of page 32, uh, it, show, it tells you what that octave sign means. So basically if it's written, say for example on middle C, and you have an octave sign above that, even though it's written as middle C, we're going to play it as the treble C there. Okay? So you have that octave sign right here at the end of measure 14 there. Okay? So, yeah, let's go ahead and go through it. Right hand starts with your one finger on G. Left hand, four finger on G. Okay? Here we go. One, two, one, two. Repeat, go. Two, one, two, one, two, one, two. Rest. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. Left hand. Two, one, two, one, two. Right hand. Two, 
Cast and move. Okay. All right. Runaway Rabbit on page 33. We still are on fourths. It's a very strong interval. Here comes the bride or amazing. So a lot of well-known songs start with that interval of a fourth. That's probably why they're hitting this one so hard on that one. Okay, Runaway Rabbit. Right hand starts on treble C. Left hand starts on the bass C. Okay. Um, not much new in this one. We have some slurs. We have some staccatos. We have some harmonic fourths at the end. Uh, so yeah, here we go. Ready, set, go. One, two. One, two. should uh, have done there is played measure 17 soft. I should have done. And then loud. Okay. All right. So yeah, fun little song. One of my favorites in this unit. And um, I think we have, okay, we have two more songs. Okay. So in on page 34, we have the rainforest where we learn about the fifth. C to G is a fifth. One, two, three, four, five. Also F to C. Or D to A. One, two, three, four, five. That's a fifth. Okay? All right. So we're holding down the pedal for the whole song, the duration of the song there. Left hand. We have our five finger on F. Thumb on C. And right hand. Thumb on D. Pinky on A. Okay? Gorgeous sound just all in itself. Okay? Here we go. One, two, ready. video here. Lightly Row, very popular song, especially in the Suzuki method. So we're going to start with our right hand, treble G, left hand, right here, okay? Uh, what do we have new in this one? Besides the interval of a fifth, uh, it's pretty straightforward. Here we go. One, two, ready, go. video we're going to discuss unit five where we talk about half rests and whole rests. Thanks for watching. See you next time.